Love Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome <clears throat> all of you back to Ohio Exopolitics. I'm your host, Mark Snyder. Tonight is going to be a Billy Meyer night. We're going to talk about the Billy Meyer case. I got all sorts of stuff to cover, and I have a new and mystery guest who I think is waiting on the line. And I believe this is Greg, is it not? It is. How's it going, Mark? Pretty good. Welcome to the show, sir. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I'm from New York. I'm American. Um, discovered the Billy Meyer case uh, about four years ago, a little more than four years ago. Uh, haven't stopped looking at it since. I've compiled a bunch of things and um, like to talk about my experience, you know, how it unfolded for me. And I also have some resources for your viewers that I'm going to direct them to if they want to get more information and um, wanted to talk about some, some free downloads they can have and some of the things that the debunkers don't talk about. I want to talk about some of those topics. What, what's your website? Um, my main one uh, regarding Billy Meyer is billymeyer.wordpress.com. Mm-hmm. On there, I took excerpts from some of the more interesting contact reports, and um, I, you know, label them in an easy-to-read format. What I found is it was very difficult for me to find the contact reports, the information, some of the important uh, documents, and I tried to make uh, that WordPress site called Beam of Light. I tried to make it easy to navigate, easy to read, and um, easy to use. Have you ever been to the Billy Meyer Wiki yet? I have. Um, yeah, I definitely Good. recommend the uh, Future of Mankind .co .uk site for the contact reports. They have the most comprehensive compilation of contact reports. Have you ordered and read any of his books yet? Yes. So as soon as I got into the case, basically, I, I found – found it on YouTube, I think, is where I want to say I started. Um, mm -hmm. I started watching the Randy Winters TV yeah. series. And Me he too. did a That's great, yeah. great, great like overview. He, yeah. He did a great job. I, those are great lessons. I'm, uh, he got into the contact reports big time. Yep. And then you know, from think, there, go ahead. I think he had a falling out with Figu, though. He did. Uh, I know about that. I've read about it. It's pretty minor. Basically, what happened was he kind of interpreted some of the things in his own way and gave his own opinion. So as he was going through the notes, he was telling the contact report notes and giving his own summary. And yeah. sometimes, you know, they like to be 100% precise. And sometimes he gave his opinions one thing or the other, like, oh, maybe this, maybe that, you know, just to kind of make it more conversational and more of a story. Um, and uh, I guess he fell away from it when, um, but I think he, 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 he served a great part for the mission. But I've, I've read all the contact reports in English. There are still a lot of contact reports that are still in German that haven't been translated yet. I've read uh, The Goblet of the Truth. I've read Might of the Thoughts. I've read The Psyche. I've read The Way to Live. And um, <laughs> dozens, if not, you know, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of pages of other excerpts and other articles and essays, and, and I got the newsletter, too. You you sound like me. I, I have been going back through the might of thoughts, and this is my sixth time through, and I'm finally starting to understand this book. Finally. I'm not saying I can apply it. I'm starting just now getting to be able to, to apply it. I, uh, I sent an email to... Um, Marion Eulinger Mondrian. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever seen her name, mm -hmm. but she does a lot of the translations. She works right with Billy, and I've been fortunate enough to have this little dialogue with her on and off for a year or two. And she said that she has read. She didn't say which book, but she said she, one of the books. I think she said she read like ten times, mm -hmm. and and it was like she was getting more out after the tenth time, if you can imagine. Yeah. I will say I do um, 
do have a little bit of background in German. My grandparents are from Heidelberg, Germany, so I used to go over every couple of years. And I do have a little bit of German language knowledge. I can speak and understand it. I'm, I, I do read uh, the German halves. I've read uh, Goblet of the Truth in German and also My Other Thoughts in German. Um, and I'm working on OM, O-M, which is, is completely is in German. Available? Oh, you're reading it in German. Good for I'm you. I'm only wow. reading it in German. I can pick up maybe 30 to 40 percent, but the the code that they talk about that's embedded in the text is still effective and releases impulses. So I'm about do, do two thirds of the way through Ohm. It takes me a long. It takes about 15 minutes to read two pages. Oh my gosh. Do you? Can you tell? Do you feel it? Do you? Are you somehow aware of the uh, code affecting you? Well. That's a good question. I've thought about that for a long time, and I'm very interested in the impulses, the fine fluidal energies, um, the immaterial, uh, the vibe, the swinging waves, as Billy oh, refers yeah. to them. Yeah. There's there's a book about it, but I haven't you know, bought it ready yet because it, it's it, it's German only and it hasn't been translated. So um, I've read excerpts from the book, and you know. Everywhere we go and every person we interact with, we subconsciously interact with their swinging waves, their vibrations, and um, maybe even their thoughts and feelings that that come out. Um, as far as the code is concerned, I do. I will say that the Ohm and Gobble of the Truth read very similar. They're kind of about the same stuff, the same topics, and there are certain language that's used that's it seems to me very uh, smooth and soothing and, and continuous. It's very continuous. It has a, a flow. And you know, um, I, Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's very nice to be around someone's swinging wave, let's say, that you're compatible with. Have you ever noticed that? Yes, and I've noticed when you're in a, a bad area or a bad situation and you have that gut feeling like something's not right, and it's that's the opposite uh, end of the spectrum too, so it works both ways. Yeah, I've I've been around people that I can I'm, I'm now starting to sense that that uh, tangible that energy whatever that is, and uh, I have to watch myself because I find that. And I can't put it into words. There, are, there are some people, and I mean people that I've interacted with for years, um, and you know I have feelings for it and whatnot, a family, friends, that sort of thing. But I can now, it's like I can almost sense the unhealthiness of their thoughts and their swinging wave, mm-hmm. where before I was not so sensitive to that. Does that sound crazy to you? No. No. Nope. And every time, I mean, once you read these books, once you read the contact reports, which it takes a long time. I want to tell people it takes a long time. Just start at the beginning, and every few nights just read a few contact reports, and however long it takes you, that's fine, you know. Um, yeah. But once you, once you read the contact reports, it demonstrates that Billy does not want attention. He didn't put this upon himself, you know, it's a, it's a great burden for him. He's almost died many times and he's, he, he raised his life many times to bring this information out. And you see when, you know, they talk in the contract reports about, you know, members that aren't getting along and all these problems and stresses and, and you say, wow, I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't just make, if he was making anything up, he wouldn't be inserting all of these bad things happening. So there's there's good and bad going on in these stories. And it's the content reports are, you know, as it's happening or shortly after it's happening. And and there are surprises in there all the time. So um, I would say I started reading the contact reports first just to get an idea and wrap my head around what was going on. And then later on I got into some of the books, starting with the Psyche, and then I got into the, you know, the more... The, the bigger books, 
Um, and I, I, I think that the psyche and the way to the way to live is a good beginner book. I would say. I think if you want to get really into it, um, might of the thoughts is very complex and takes a long time to digest. But uh, the way to live is short sentences and verses that are just kind of general and and very helpful also. Yeah, the uh, the psyche. It was very interesting. I was. Um it was the first time we went to Arizona. I went to the Munns Park study group out there. Right. And I um, was in the Flagstaff airport and I had bought the book when I was at the meeting, basically. And I bought this book. I bought the psyche and I bought um, the might of thoughts. And I was in the airport and I was reading this book and it was so profound it was just absolutely like the first 25 pages of this were just so it's just like I cannot even begin to describe it but there is one thing that I will read quickly sure. because it relates to the swinging wave that we were talking about Okay. Uh, and this is page 10 and they're talking about the gamut Okay. The the gamut is referred to as that spiritual block and factor which within the spirit body of a life form, in this case the human being, regulates and looks after the spirit consciousness-based feelings and the spirit consciousness-based thoughts in itself in a constant equalized form. Contrary to the psyche, the gamut of the spirit realm cannot be influenced by negative powers, e.g. negative thoughts, etc., et but only by neutral positive ones, which therefore means that only powers corresponding to an equalized form of positive and negative penetrate into the gamut, through which the gamut always exhibits an equalized harmony. So this is the way these books read. Yeah. You know, they're so profound. Like, I had to read the first couple of chapters in the psyche, at least a dozen times, I think more, mm. for me before it really sunk in. And I think they recommend that you read the psyche first and then the might of thoughts, if I mm-hmm. remember correctly. Yes, because might of thoughts is more complex and psyche is more of an introduction, I think, um, to it. Also, um, on my WordPress site, uh, billymeyer.wordpress.com, I have, one of the excerpts is about the pineal gland and how it's connected to the paranormal. And, you know, I see all these people talking, you know, on other sites and other uh, so-called truth seekers that are, you know, talking about the pineal gland. But this excerpt, or um, it's an explanation by Pata. It's um, about fine flutalness of the fine spiritual perception and telepathy and levitation and, and teleportation, all that. It's an explanation by Pata. And he talks about about the gamut and also how sort of like the swinging waves are, you know, picked up by the pineal gland. That's the antenna um, for these waves and uh, and the fine spiritual perception. And we actually have seven senses and not just five. He talks about that. So um, I, I found that it was the best, you know, scientific description of how uh, fine fluidal fluidal singing, swinging waves can be perceived by us. And that's the explanation by Pata on, on the Beam of Light site. There is a passage in the um, Goblet of Truth, if I can remember it. Uh, it's entitled, What the Truth Knows to Say. And it says something like, River stones, bushes, trees, Plants, animals, everything that crawls and flies on the earth is a life form with a spirit form. And these spirit forms are on a journey through time, which involve many, many lifetimes. And in that death is just the rebirth into another form of life. And that all of these creatures, it says, are connected by this swinging wave that you were talking about. And I want to do... Read what it says about the swinging wave here. It says, electromagnetic swinging waves in the teaching of the spirit are periodically built up electric and magnetic fields which are not bound to any matter, but nonetheless include energies and 
fold forces, which can be of immense might. So I think later on in later reincarnations, we might be able to use these swinging waves to do pretty amazing things. What are your thoughts? I think we can to some degree. We, you know, some people are more intuitive than others, and they are sensitive to vibrations. Um, they say that, yes, we will be able to develop certain abilities, um, such as telepathy. And um, on that note, um, I would like to point out that in my research, speaking of channeling, there are so many people that you know claim they can channel. Somewhere I recently found that uh, Pata or another uh, playaren said that basically one only one in a billion people on Earth can actually channel. And at the time, the world's population was around 7 billion. Now it's 8.8 billion, which nobody mm-hmm. talks about. They all think it's much less. But mm-hmm. the... Um, yeah, so um, the the actual number of people that can channel is only seven people on the planet, and none of them are pub- going public. So all the people that you see <laughs> on alternative news sites are it's not it's not authentic, and it's it's form of imagination or schizophrenia, or even as well-meaning as they are, it's not it's not authentic, it's not real, it's not possible because they haven't been trained specifically to do that with their abilities, or they're not, they're not just, they're not able to because they're not developed yet. Their spirit form isn't developed enough. You know, it's, it's weird being in this field because I, I feel myself in two different worlds. You know, I really, um, my interest is really just the Meyer case at this point, but yep. I do have other guests on, you know what I'm saying? I do have other guests on mm-hmm. and I have, I just, I just kind of go with the flow, you know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. um, the Meyer case, one thing I can explain it is like, it's like a light shining in a dark room. And it it rewires your whole brain. And I can't expect these people to just, you know, have their whole brains rewired (laughs) instantly. So I, uh, I don't know. I just, I... It's a very weird field to be in. Like, let's let's just take the term, the idea, the concept of disclosure, because yeah. the one thing that I've learned, and I would be interested to hear your thoughts on this, is I don't really have a need for disclosure anymore. What What are your thoughts? Well, I do. Um, I wrote a poem about it. If I can read it to you, I'll look it up. Sure. My sure. other personal blog is Greg Dougal dot wordpress dot com and that's d o u g a l l um it's also called cosmic love is like the 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 title of my that wordpress site and the subtitle is outer space and inner spirit so basically i posted stuff like every all the other people um that interested me i i posted stuff about channeling and chakras and energy and uh, outer space sightings and uh, UFO claims and things on other moons and structures and other things. Anything I find, I wanted to compile it and look for the best stuff and put it all in one spot. And I, you know, basically now it's like, you know, 90 you know, 90% Billy Meyer related and then 10% scientific advancements that corroborate what he's been saying all this time. But I wrote a, a poem called We Are Disclosure. And I, I... I understand that other people want the same thing, but what boggles my mind is how have they not found and how are they not talking about Billy Meyer when I myself have more photographic, I have about 40 or 50 photos from Wendell Stevens' collection. I have more, I have more physical proof and evidence than any of these other whistleblowers, you know, out talking out there. Exactly. And, and you know, they're going off of stories and conjecture and rumors and, and whistleblowers who worked in the military 40 years ago, you know? And what can you what can you get from them? Michael Harmon would say, well, who cares? Like, what can we do about it now? This The Billy Meyer case is what's relevant now, and it's going to be relevant for the next 800 years. And until I see more detailed and helpful information, then there's no point in wasting your time with other stuff. Well, let me let me put the question another way. Since you've done this four years of intensive research, how many people in our government do you think really know more about 
extraterrestrial life than you do at this point. Very few. I would only think. <laughs> I, ahead, I would yeah. only think that um, you know certain Air Force people know a lot, quite a bit, uh, and maybe some Navy uh, people, but very, very high up. Um, mm-hmm. I would say politicians are clueless. Whether they've seen a UFO or not, that doesn't mean anything. Um, I'm sure people in the military. Um, I've heard that they've 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 looked into the Henoch prophecies because you know it involves America. And I'm sure people have found in the military have found references to American Billy Meyer. I know the CIA asked Wendell Stevens to report what he found when he was going over there. They stopped him in London and they said, "Hey, um, I don't know if you read that, but um, oh yeah, yeah." They, when they messed with the, the, the telephones, the player messed with the, the, the secure telephones and the secure safe, and um, to, to let them know that you know basically there's no you, this, you know the CIA isn't keeping any secrets from the play <laughs> and um, I think well, tell, uh, dis- elaborate on that story. Do you, yeah. do you remember that story in detail? Um. Not not much too more other than like the ten okay. rings that they made and everything. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have forgotten a lot of that. Go yeah, ahead, well, uh, the highlights were Wendell Stevens and his group went over, and you know, someone in London pulled him aside. And uh, oh, first of all, when this was going on, Wendell Stevens was one of the top UFO investigators in the world. And when he found the Billy Meyer case, he was blown away. He's like, "This is." But these photos are more clear than anything I've ever seen. So that should right. tell people something, first of all, and, you know, give it, lend some credibility. So then he brings his, you know, um, Lee Elders and and those people who are, you know, sought after security experts. Um, they go over and they get, they get pulled over by someone in a trench coat, you know, and... Uh, so they say, you know, we, we want to, we know you're going to Switzerland. We want you to share, you know, you know, tell us what you found. And they were like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to get too involved. But, you know, the the intelligence service had a listening post up up the hill from Meyer's house. And, um, right. you know, they, in in this, in this meeting, they, the play arms made this secure phone line ring 10 times in a row. And the, <laughs> the the intelligence officer was embarrassed, and he didn't know what was what was going on. And <laughs> there was also this he had this safe in his office, like oh nobody can get the safe, blah blah blah. And then um, a couple hours later, they Wendell Stevens found the contents of the safe like on his desk, <laughs> and he and he returned it to the guy, and he's like, how did you get this? He's like, I didn't look at it, don't worry, I don't, I don't know, but um. It, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny that they they got involved in that. But um, I ha- I pulled up that poem. It's called "We Are Disclosure." I I don't think, I don't think, it's going to come uh, through the government. If it does, it's going to be manipulated. It's not going to be anything. It's not going to be anything as satisfying or as enlightening as the truth that that we have from the case. But um, can I can I sure. read the poem? Please, okay. please do. Thanks. So hopefully you've given up on getting the latest watch or cell phone and started to wonder if we are alone from our little blue planet to the star Alcyon. And after this marvelous coming attraction, you'll understand why everything else is a distraction. Did you ever ask your friend as a kid if we would find out where the aliens hid? Did you ever wonder in the vastness of space if we are the only intelligent race? After a few years of research and reading every day, I found that we are alone in no way. If life on our planet hasn't got you depressed, wait till you see how much evidence is suppressed. We've had visitors for millions of years who came and went with the same hopes and fears. The reasons were love, the reasons were war, the reasons to search, discover, explore. First there's Ptah. Please give him praise. Let's hope Aaron's keep visiting for many years and days. Some of his friends are Samyasi and Quetzal, who frequently visit the land of beer and pretzel. But seriously, with over 1,000 visits, the Aarons left 700 contact reports as exhibits. They also let one man photograph, film, and record them, and that is why religions and governments abhor them. We wave our flags and salute Uncle Sam, not knowing the whole time it's all a big scam. 
and trillions of dollars are wasted on weapons and the so-called secret space program. But before you try to come up with a rebuttal, why do you think they discontinued the shuttle? The reason is simple, as Dr. Greer says. It's the biggest leak since the Exxon Valdez. They don't use fuel. They don't fuel their ships with gasoline. They have fuel and propulsion that's entirely clean. So every time you pay your bill, just know that the oil industry is getting its fill. The blood of the earth is being sucked dry, and we are the suckers, and that is no lie. We don't have to have cancer. We don't have to have AIDS. We don't have to fight wars or battles or crusades. These humans have messages to perk up our ears, and we should listen to people who live 1,000 years. We can no longer believe the media or news or churches or armies or any of that ruse. They have taken the truth and technology and clues and used it to kill and control and abuse. I don't care if you're pissed and I hope you get mad because the worst of the offenders is much worse than bad. It's the Catholic Church, the Vatican and Rome who knew all along the truth of our home. The biggest, most slanderous historical libel is none other than your so-called, quote, holy Bible. It's not my fault. They changed the phrasing. And if if a being came out of the sky, I'd think it was amazing. Here is the quote, God's honest truth. Those angels were extraterrestrials, and this is the proof. It's written down and explained to the finest granule, and the documents called the Talmud Emmanuel. They could not pit people to fight nation against nation if everyone knew the true laws of creation. And almost everyone out there would call me a liar except for the one-armed farmer, Billy Meyer. There are artifacts and tools and pieces of the past, but everything is scooped up and hidden real fast. Roswell was real. It really did crash and they want you to believe in that swamp gas trash, or a weather balloon, or a flock of birds, and 1,000 other kinds of phrases or words. If you think my stories come out of thin air, just watch the interviews of David Adair. Isn't it all clicking? Doesn't it make sense? The only real enemy is the Department of Defense, the NSA, the alphabet soup. There is no low to which they won't stoop. They know the gig's up and the truth is verboten, and I can't wait to see the real secrets of Snowden. There's so much, only so much I can say in just a few minutes, but when it comes to ET life, there's hardly any limits. Our ga- galaxy has 156 billion suns, so how many systems have life? There are tons. Seven million planets have life of some kind, and half of these have human life defined. There are 3.67 million human civilizations, and we think we're hot stuff with 195 nations. You do have to wake up and turn off your phone. There's so much to learn about what is unknown. We need to get out and spend time outside and appreciate the planet on which we reside. We need to look higher, look up at the stars, and ponder the pyramids and bases on Mars. We need to ask questions and get to the truth. You can be a detective, reporter, or sleuth. We must understand our galactic history, and everything else will cease being a mystery. I'm giving you tools. I'm giving you hope. I'm giving our government a noose made of rope. Declare your freedom. Declare your independence. Study the ways of love and transcendence. So will you take action? Will you take to the streets? Do we demand justice and remove the elites? They are responsible for holding us down, for trying to hold us underwater till we drown. Reclaim your consciousness. Take back your rights. I want you to shine brighter than UFO lights. For everyone wondering when they'll get closure, I hate to admit it, but we are disclosure. (laughs) Very well said. You should send that to Figu. I think that's beautiful. Thanks. Great words, man. Very insightful. That's fantastic. Um, have you studied the Giza intelligences at all? A bit. Um, I do know that, um, you know, contrary to what a lot of um, pe- people in the UFO community industry claim, um, you know that there's there's no more there's no evil ETs, right? As Michael Horan say, there's no there's no little greys, there's no reptilians, there's no evil ETs anywhere. Um, there's no recently this came out that there's no um aliens in Antarctica. So Billy uh, Michael Horn asked Billy if is there any Nazi bases or ETs in Antarctica. Just just in May of a couple months ago when he was over there. And Billy mm-hmm. said no. Um there's no aliens in Antarctica. The only Nazi base was an old insignificant outpost and it has no significance. So that debunks the entire Antarctica as Atlantis, you know, thing, uh, first of all. The Giza intelligences um, were, there, there were a, a small number of very old 
ETs that had a base under the Giza pyramids that uh, man manipulated many religions and religious people. Uh, but that that was ended um, a few decades ago. So this, this was happening in the 70s and 60s and 70s and 80s and maybe um, in the 90s that, that and, and 2000s, that, that was gone. They, they took, the Plarents came in and, and, you know, extracted those those remaining, um, you know, people. So, and as far as the men in black are concerned, um, you know, few people more know about it than Billy, but um, the men in black, some of them were from the Sirius region, and they were also arrested and located and taken away. So, currently, I don't, uh, you know, according to Billy, there's there's no evil alien agenda or anything under the Giza pyramids, but what do you have to say about Giza? Well, did you study when Billy and Askett went to the headquarters of the Giza intelligence? That is a fantastic contact report. Yes, it's an adventure. They they sneak down and they're invisible and they sneak by the guards and they go in and they find um, you know, the fake uh, well, like, like a crucifix that they, they said. Yes. Was, yeah. Was supposed to be from the the crucifixion, um, and um, well, they you know they they showed Billy things firsthand, and so he Can you would imagine? know from himself what's what's real and what's not. Yeah. That whole that whole case is so fantastic because he goes, you know, his his time with Spot is over, and he's going to meet his new mentor, and I think he's only like 16 years old, and he goes right. to the top of this hill, and you know, out of the sky comes this robotic craft, and he said it felt just like when he was pulled in the sloth ship. It was almost mm -hmm. like being lifted up by ghostly hands, mm -hmm. and there was the flash of light, and then <laughs> he couldn't see the ship anymore, and he couldn't see his own body, and he's hovering over his village where he lives, and then he shoots off to uh, the Middle East. It's a fantastic story. I mean, um, the, the the contact reports, man, they're just amazing. I mean, there's so much information there. It's just astonishing. There's so much. And I want to um, offer something to your readers. I've made two compilations from the contact reports. So the first one, if anyone's interested in outer space, science, you know, the history of the, our solar system, um, stars, you know, dark energy. Uh, Billy knows 100 times more than all the scientists put together on, on Earth. So I went through all the contact reports one at a time, and I pulled out the outer space-related information, and I put it in a, a PDF or a Word document, basically. I just put it all in there, and, they, I mean, it talks about you know, dozens and dozens of different things in, in detail. So that's on um, on my Beam of Light uh, WordPress site, the BillyMeyer.wordpress.com. That can be fi found on the um, the download page, basically, um, where I offer some documents, and that's it's offered for free, so people can you know t take a piece out of the contact reports and you know. Um, learn about the space related stuff if you know as they're going through the con the rest of the contact reports um the other compilation i did was um i took some of the stories that, one of the most important contact reports i think is 251 um yeah. where he basically retells um the galactic history of humans from you know the beginning of the noco demon spirit form all up to today and how um noco demons peoples migrated through different systems and eventually more recently they basically split into two uh two areas which was Sirius and um Lyra Vega and from there is where you know they started visiting earth and i go through the whole thing it's called we came from the stars and then from mars mm -hmm. and i took different contact re report conversations. He was either talking to Samyasi or he's talking to Quetzal or Pata. And I kind of put them all in a sequential order in a timeline. So first you start out with his story of to, you know, maybe 22 million years ago. And then he, he talks about, you know, 389,000 years ago 
and the Ishwishes and the, the kings of wisdom that came, um, Aris, Pelagon, Samyasa, you know, all those uh, guys who came with their guards. Um, and uh, then it goes into, you know, how the destroyer came through our solar system and moved things around, you know, tells where our moon came from. Um, it tells how the biblical floods were were caused and all these disasters and so many other other things but uh, about our, our DNA and how we came to be, uh, our lifespan came to be limited and all that. And then it kind of goes into like where we are today and, and what we're looking forward to in the future. But it's, a, it's another PDF um, called We Came From The Stars and Them From Mars. So people download that from my site too. Um, and that's billymeyer.wordpress.com. We came from the stars not and, and from Mars. That's one of the – on the first page – Somewhere? It's it's not on the it's on the um basically the downloads um page. Oh okay okay okay. Now you also have one here about the teachings of Muhammad were falsified and also incorrectly interpreted. That looks kind of interesting. Yep, that's one of the more recent ones um, that came up that was recently translated. See, we don't know how much else he's talked about because there's a whole chunk of it still in German. You know, we still have so much more information that's waiting to be translated. And oh, I know. Covered. So yeah. much more. And, and who knows, you know. I want to say, I want to guess maybe maybe three quarters of the contact reports have been translated into English, but maybe 25, 30 percent are still German. I'm not, I'm not really exactly sure, but yeah, it's I mean, quite a big I think chunk. He's- He's got like 40 to 50 books, and we've only got like four books, I think, translated, right? Yeah. So just a small little bit, not not a whole lot. Now, yeah. you know, each one of these is you could probably do a show on. For example, this one looks very interesting, Origin of Earth Human Races. Yeah. That's also something I've studied. That's very There's a interesting. Few, they talk about it a few different times. The, or he, he has the conversation with a few different people. This is just one of the excerpts. So on the main page of Beam of Light, um, it says important spiritual and scientific information from beyond the Pleiades and the Pleiaran system. And let that be a note to readers out there that the Pleiaran are from the Pleiaris. Um, it's not the Pleiades. It's, it's a different place. It's in the same direction, but it's not, it's not the Pleiades, and they're not, they don't consider themselves Pleiadian. Um, but on the main page, you see um, these little boxes, and it says, you know, um, facts about our sun soul, and it's about the, you know, things about the Tunguska crater and um, the ages of the Egyptian pyramids and all these different topics. These are excerpts, but um, up on the top, it says about, and that's a little, you know, summary of his life. And then to the right, it says ebooks is where the downloads are. Um, oh, okay. The ebooks is where I have, um, you can download the Goblet of the Truth for free, which is directly sourced from the Figu website. And then you can see um, We Came from the Stars and Then from Mars, which is my compilation of the true galactic history of humans on Earth, according to Billy. And then the space-related excerpts I have, and then the destruction of the environment as a consequence of overpopulation, which is another um, good article. And also the the family tree lineage um, of the Nocodemian spirit form and Billy's previous personalities and related people. Um, you know, when you put all this together, it just makes so much more sense. When you, you know, when you read the Talmud of Emmanuel, you read the content reports, and you find out, slowly find the rest of the information and put it all together. I mean, it's just, it's a compl- it becomes complete. Have you ever studied the planet Malona? Yes, that is detailed um, in We Came from the Stars and Then from Mars. Um, for those people who don't know, uh, Malona or Phaeton or Phaeton was a planet in our solar system. It's now the asteroid belt. So there used to be a planet where Mars is, and Mars used to be in the spot where the asteroid belt is today. And I have a very good picture in my ebook here. We came from the stars and then from Mars. There's a very good picture of the solar system, and it shows where the asteroid belt is today. That, that used to be a planet, and it, 
Mars and Melona used to be switched in positions. So when I say we came from the stars and then from Mars, what I mean is Nocodemian's people, right, and these spacefaring races had all these, you know, trials and tribulations, and they went all over the galaxy, you know, looking for peace or looking to escape or explore new places. And they came from the stars. They came from very far away. And then they came to Mars, Malona, and Earth. Then they came to our solar system. But there are, uh, you know, there's more to the, the Cydonia air region of Mars than most people know. Everybody knows of the, the face on Mars. But um, I came across Wayne Herschel's research of star maps, and he found over 20 examples of places on Earth where there's monuments and pyramids um, that are a perfect overlay of a stellar constellation. So um, there's one of these on Mars in Cydonia. So to the left of the face on Mars, there's all of these other pyramids. But if you take a, uh, a layover of the Pleiades and other surrounding stars and put it on top of the Cydonia region, it's a perfect, perfect fit. So, okay. you know, Billy has said... Um, or, or one of the one of the prophecies or predictions or forecasts have said that someday you know we will be going back out into the solar system. We will eventually you know find where we came from once our technology develops, and we will also find that there are artifacts and old bases on Mars. So, <clears throat> the genetically manipulated people came both to Mars and Malona, correct? Yes, and another solar system on the other side of the Milky Way. Oh, that's um, interesting. Uh, Nis- I think it's the Nissan system. Uh, hmm. um, so they came to two different places. At the same time, they, they came here and also another place uh, on the other side of the, the, um, the, the galaxy, which isn't really that far for them. But uh, um, Earth did not have the best breathable air at the time. Uh, Malona uh, and Mars were more suitable to where they came from. I guess they were living in ships for a long time. Um, but Malona and Mars had had um, uh, pretty pretty good air. Then when they were forced to leave Malona, um, well, Malona was blown up. Um, and then Mars, they knew it was coming. They knew there was going to be well, they may have known. I think when the destroyer came through, the sun belched out, you know, it rocked the whole solar system and the atmosphere was stripped from Mars. But when they were coming to Earth, they had to sort of adjust to the Earth's climate and atmosphere and air because they weren't, it wasn't quite perfect for them. Um, it's such an amazing story, that whole history of the genetically manipulated people and so for people that are listening to us that may not know, we have been genetically manipulated, our heritage, it's part of our genes now, to, to live a shortened lifespan and and to have increased aggression. Right. Now why why was that? Why do we have that, Greg? We did that because uh one of the E. T. groups he talked about went to Lyra Vega and they and they sort of developed peace. You know, 50, 000, they've been in peace for 50,000 years. The other group that went to Sirius, they d- developed themselves very highly, very quickly, very spiritually, but they lost the physical capabilities, the, the, strength, the strength to fight and, 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 you know, defend themselves. So they became very advanced, but um, lost the ability to fight. So... Because they were so advanced, they they created um, a race that was uh, had a shortened lifespan and more aggressive, and it did help protect them from aggressor races. So they came up with these these armies or these humans like us that looked like us and lived like us, and um, they protected their creator race. And then eventually they got to this this problem where. You know, our ancestors kind of wisened up and 
and and they they kind of wisened up. They said, hey, what what if they turn against us and, and attack us? So some of the ETs said we should kill them, and some of the ETs said we should let them let them live. And at that point, some benevolent ETs helped uh, some humans escape, and they came to the star system. Now, Billy talks about visitations from different races, but I want to say that there there were different times that visitors came. Visitors came from different places at different times for different reasons. I think the first was like 22 million years ago, and then, you know, things came and then they died out. And then they came a couple hundred thousand years ago, and then they came a hundred thousand. You know, they came at different times, and, and different kind of civilizations rose and, and fell. Um, so I can't talk about just one one example because it's been happening forever, you know. Um and I don't have the exact dates, but he he does go into the exact years in the more recent times of what happened. And I believe the people from the Cirrus regions were called the Creator Overlords, right? Yes. Very interesting yes. terms. And he only seems to use that term in, in Contact Report 251. I can't remember him using that later, but it's an interesting term. Hmm. It has a connotation that I think uh, it's fascinating. And what, what did they call the people that came? Because there were certain people that came with them to our solar system. Did they call them the benefactors or something like that? Mm. The people that didn't have the genetic manipulations. The people that would still live a thousand years or whatever. Right. Um, they... They came um, for different reasons, I guess. They, I, I, I don't remember the term. Uh, I suppose they were the benevolent protectors, you know, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the, um, yeah, they were they were more, more forgiving, I guess, or compassionate. <laughs> yeah, the, the benefactors. That's very interesting, and and the impression that I got when I was reading this. And maybe it says something specific that I'm I'm not remembering, but. I remember when I after I read this that I got the impression that we really can't be out into space or shouldn't be out in space until this genetic manipulation is fixed. Did you get that impression? Yes. So they say that there is one gene uh that was manipulated and eventually we will discover this gene and we'll be able to correct it or reverse it. Um, I want to point out too that this gene um, uh, I'm reading I'm reading the document here um, this gene is what religions used to refer to as uh, original sin. Yes, the old It makes sin sense. Nature. You know, <laughs> I I you was raised it. I was raised um in a Roman Catholic uh, family, and you know, very early on, things didn't make sense for me. And by the time I was a teenager, I was basically done. And I said, "Well, this doesn't make sense, and I'm going to find my own path." And but I, I do, I am amazed how many things are correct from religion, how many things are are right, or how many ideas they did get right. Um, yeah. They they came close, but the the language and the words are all different. You know, it's. You use one different word, and it changes the whole story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg, I have a, a caller. Uh, they've got their question mark up there. Sometimes that means they, they, they have a question or they want to make a sure. comment. So I'm going to bring sure. someone on the air here. Uh, 830, did you have a question? Uh, actually, I was uh, just I was kind of listening in. Um, I Okay. I have more more of a story, but it's not right now. Uh, I don't think would be the time. But if I could, maybe at the end of the show, or closer sure, to sure. the end, maybe. If, okay, thank you. I'll put you on mute. Sometimes they, it's hard to tell. If, you know, usually I get a little question mark there if they want to come on, and and he did. And um, so we were talking yes, about we were talking about the gene manipulation. So yes, they sir. basically say other. Other ET races really don't want to meet with us until we fix our our own problems, 
First of all, yeah. we're not warlike anymore, and we also, at probably the same time, would figure out the gene manipulation and fix that, and then we can, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a better we'll have better lives. We'll be able to develop the way we should according to the spiritual teachings, the non-religious spiritual teachings that have been taught, you know, for for you know tens of thousands of years on this planet. And they don't want to meet with us, basically, until uh, we're peaceful. <laughs> it's very interesting. It, it made me look at us here on Earth, Earth humans, in a completely different light. And I see us as in big trouble when I read this about the genetic manipulation. And it really made a lot of sense to me. Did you have that same kind of reaction or something different? I did. Well, it just clarified a lot of things. You know, everything that I've read from Billy Meyer so far in the past four years straight, and I've been reading his stuff every day, um, is that it just makes more sense. It's more detailed than anything else out there. So, um, you know, once you go through the information, you know, I, I've never met anyone who's read all of the information and didn't agree, didn't eventually, you know, you know embrace it. You know, I really hope he's wrong about some of these prophecies about the U.S. <laughs> oh, they're ghastly. I'm hoping uh. maybe. Uh, I'm hoping maybe the best case scenario is that the U.S. is just called something different, and it doesn't. You know, um, right. I I am, I am, uh, you know, trying to work on the San Francisco quake problem because I'm pretty sure that's going to happen in my lifetime, oh, and. Really? Um, I don't think the Yellowstone caldera eruption will happen in my lifetime. I think that will be, you know, could be a few hundred years from now. Um, but yeah, I, I know, you know, I know the World War III is is, is less of it, less of, severe of a threat, um, I think, than it was, you know, in the 70. At a certain point in the 70s or 80s, it was it was a high threat of happening. I think now, um, behind the scenes, the big powers, Russia, China, and America, are have some alliances, and they, they know what's going on and everything else, just to show. Um, as far as things that are going to happen, you know, two civil wars in the United States, it's making a whole lot of more sense now than it did just even a couple of years ago. Um, I know there will be uh, viruses that come from outer space, and I wrote about this on my WordPress, on the Greg Dougal one. Um, NASA is hiring someone to protect us from possible contamination from outer space. So they're creating this position where they, a scientist will, will be sure that, you know, we're not contaminated from anything out there because they found things growing on the International Space Station. Well, you know, Billy Meyer and maybe even, the, you know, the prophecies from long before have said we're going to be in outer space. There's going to be new problems. We're we're going to run into you know viruses or, or diseases that come from from outer space because not is there plant, animal, and human life is also bacteria. Um, you know that's one of the things on the the beam of light site is there's bacteria um, that can survive in lava and fire. Wow. So and and suns. So if there's bacteria that can survive in in a, in a star and in, in lava, then it, you know life is pretty robust and is all over the all, all over the universe. That's incredible. I didn't. I don't remember that. That's amazing. But but why is NASA creating this position to protect us from contamination, possible contamination in space, when they don't think there's any life anywhere? In yeah, in the universe. The story. The story never makes sense. Um, now. Did these creator overlords, would they still try to destroy us if they came into contact? I don't think so. Um, okay. I know they said it was stupid of us to put a plaque of information on the Voyager probes that are going out into space because we think that, or NASA thinks that, uh, a little copper disc or a record player with a picture of a human with all of our information and location, they think that... Um, you know, we we just barely send it out to the our our, our probe to the end end of the so, edge of the solar system in in uh, forty forty years was it anniversary or the Voyager mm -hmm. just we just hit forty years I think um, but it was kind of stupid because there are there are aggressive and evil or uh, not so nice uh, races out there and there are mostly 
very good ones who were highly advanced. Um, we we need to um, basically fix our problems on, on Earth, um, I think, first, before we, we get too far uh, anywhere as a civilization. The do you, and This is a little farther down in 251, and I hate because I'm skipping a lot of interesting material. But transhumanism, he talks about the robotic people. Yep. Yeah. It, we, we will, um, or certain, certain groups um, will have an interface where, like, let's say your arm, you have a half an, half an arm and there's, like, nerves that are sticking out, and that can be coupled with an electronic arm. So um, in the future, they warn about, obviously, you know, major weapons, like ray weapons, beam weapons, um, biological weapons. They warn about diseases from outer space. They warn about basically catastrophes where we're going to try and uh, we're going to mess with you know a couple of different planets uh, in our solar system or thing, do things in the sky that's going to fall down and break. They warn about um, hybrid soldiers like clone soldiers or uh, human pig hybrid clones for fighting. Um, yeah. and there was our, there was that was corrob- corroborated in in the mainstream news or in the you know the offbeat news um, already. So there are definitely are secret projects that are, are working on these kinds of things. Microchipping. Please, people do not get microchipped. It's uh, So there, there's, there's a lot of things. You know, the San Francisco um, earthquake is, is not a prophecy. It's, it's going to happen. You know, and it's going to happen when we have cars. And when you start seeing cars with uh, cameras instead of side mirrors and glass roofs, that's the clue that we have from Wendell Stevens. And there were people who looked at these photos. So this is a little bit of a stretch to some people who are new to the case. But, you know, according to the information in the case, they took him to see certain things in the future and also certain things in the past to so he could see firsthand what was going to happen or what did happen. Um, the... The San Francisco quake is not a prophecy. That means it's it's a matter of time, and it's it's going to happen on a certain date. And and Billy knows it, but you know he can't say, or you know it does, doesn't really matter. But we need to think about um, we need to think about flooding. You know we need to think about Apophis in 2029 20, or 2036. 20, we need to think about overpopulation. We need to oh, think yeah. about the the rising sea level, which is going to rise more than five feet by the year 2100, and um, you know I think if I you know take uh, condense all of this, their 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 biggest warnings, at least in the beginning, when um, you know in Askits or some Yassi's explanations in the beginning, you know you you learn very quickly that the biggest things they're against is overpopulation and religion. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. I remember first looking over this material and you know you come across the the areas where it's speaking against religion and it kind of has a shock and it creates this cognitive dissonance inside you right. and then you know now after all these years it all makes sense now it all makes where, sense and you know I do have to give you know credit not not all religion is all 100% bad but when you right. find out what they didn't tell you then you're going to be pretty. You're going to be pretty pissed off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I tell you another what, thing no. I, I wanted to bring up that a lot of the debunkers don't talk about. So, for anyone who is, you know, anti Billy Meyer or thinks it's, it was hoaxed or faked, um, I just want to talk about a couple different things that the debunkers don't talk about. So, the debunkers talk about. We okay. So we know. But the people who have researched the case, we all know that pictures were stolen from Billy. So he, I, in, in in my uh, beam of light on the Billy Meyer at WordPress, if you go to a word about on the authenticity of evidence, Pata says, over the course of, I'm paraphrasing here, over the course of the years, you've taken 1,476 photographs and 23 films of which, you know, 230 were falsified or stolen or, or lost. So, And he said, uh, on top of that, hundreds more were lost or stolen. So we know that 
a lot of pictures were passed around. And a lot of pictures, when he sent out the film to be developed at a um, you know, developing center, a lot of pictures didn't come back. And a lot of right. pictures were intercepted or other stuff was stuffed in and planted in there. And we know that why, and it's pretty easy to know why, it's because Billy was coming out with all of these you know, this this secret information about world leaders and assassination plots and all these, you know, things that would rock the foundations of governments and religions. So mm-hmm. everybody was trying to to get a peek. I think all the world governments and intelligence services uh, were trying to get a peek at what's, what was going on or, or, you know, discredit him. So um, what the, the bunkers don't talk about is all the, you know, 1,000 photos that weren't falsified, you know? Okay, right. so so someone slipped in uh, a couple pictures. Um, okay, so great. So what about the 1,000 other pictures that are perfectly authentic and have been analyzed by world experts? Uh, what about the 125 eyewitnesses who give their testimonies? The fingerprints, the fingerprints, footprints, metal samples, sound recordings, multiple photographers, assassination attempts they never talk about. If someone was hoaxing this, he he wouldn't people wouldn't be trying to, from all over the world wouldn't be trying to kill him um the light years book now i i only read light years by gary kinder more recently but it's it's available online for free if you look at some of the billy meyer sites one of them has uh gary kinder granted permission to post his book light years for free now if you want to buy the light years book it's a great read um but you can read the story online and Gary Kinder was a very skeptical person and who went over to, re- to research and try and debunk Billy Meyer. And for all the people who, who want to debunk him, I would say go to the source, go read this stuff from Billy Meyer directly, not what other people write about him. Go to the source and actually read what people were doing at the time that this was all happening, when the pictures were being taken in the, in the late 70s or um, late 70s, basically, the pictures were coming out. And the pictures were going in world magazines all over the world. So um, the pictures, uh, uh, light years, Gary Kinder gives the word-for-word accounts of all these people that went, that drove Billy to the contacts, or people that were witness, witnessing events. People were witnessing all of these things. There hmm. were, there's well over 100 witnesses who have given their, their account, and there were many, many more that did not give their account but they witnessed all these events. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, Billy Meyer had no money back then. And, and he lived in a little, little village. And German and Swiss people and European people are nosy. You know, the, the town is on top of you. And you can't do anything without – you can't leave the house without someone looking and watching and being nosy. And no one's ever seen him driving to the contacts with – models or a string or anything like that it would take a lot of equipment to do this the only thing he would do is he'd drive off with a camera and mm-hmm. he would come back with a camera you know so he didn't have any you know resources he was dirt poor for a very long time he refused to take money for any of this stuff until they forced him to start accepting payment for some of the stuff he was doing mm-hmm. and you know people need to read the first hand eyewitness accounts first of all you know before they you know, they believe some kind of third or fourth party attacker who who can't wrap their head around the information and the evidence. The other thing is that people are strange in the way they view things, in the way they decide things. In other words, if you were really searching for the truth, like you were saying, and a guy has made 1,400 photographs, a few of them look strange. Um, wouldn't you suspend your disbelief? Wouldn't you go and read some of his material? I, I was, I was, I had a problem with some of the pictures in the beginning. Like I thought they were very strange and weird, and mm-hmm. I had, I had recognized pictures from earlier in my life. So I, I didn't, never heard of Billy Meyer until I was a grown adult, right? But I had seen some of the UFO pictures. Because mm-hmm. they're sprinkled all over, and people use them. People use his photos for other things, you know, when they're talking about UFOs. Because he has the best pictures. So uh, some of the fo- like the one like the, from the X Files, like I want to believe, the I want to believe poster. That's Billy Myers' beamship photo. That's one of his photos. And when they redid 
the X Files a, a year or two ago. Uh, it came out with new episodes. They used several of his photos in the introduction of the first episode. They they used his photos again. So, um, you know, I had a problem. The biggest problem I had was with the wedding cake UFO, which looks the strangest. But I want oh. to address some people's concerns about the the beam ships. First of all, the pictures and the films are not the most important part of the case. So don't get too hung up on it. It's just the right. way they it's just their transportation. It's not a big deal. They can shield <laughs> they can shield themselves from visibility. They can, you know, out of 360 degree view, they can make themselves visible to just one person standing over in a field and no one else, you know? Yeah. So they have the ability to cloak and decloak, okay? Then they have the ability to shift and jump out of uh, you know, time or sequence or dimension or whatever you want to call it, so they can just you know pop in and out of places. Um, mm-hmm. Then they did demonstration flights. So they did demonstration flights, and they said, "We're going to make this look like it's swinging on a string," you know, like to get people's <laughs> attention. You know, they 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 said this. They 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 laid a few traps. You know, they for for stupid people or or for skeptical people, not skeptical people, but for the attackers. They said. You know, at this time, everyone's going to be claiming to have contact with us, and they're going to say they're meeting with Pleiadians. Well, we're not Pleiadians. There's no life in the Pleiades star cluster because it's a hot blue young star cluster, and there's no life there. It has developed. We're not from the Pleiades. From beyond there, we're from a split, you know, fraction of a time, you know, split second off of your dimension a little bit, so you can't really see us anyway, even if you looked over there. So, you know, don't worry about that. Um, you know, we're just going to get these photos out so you get the press attention, you know, a press of the world. And actually just on eBay got uh, the magazine Der Spiegel, which is a German magazine. It's like Time or Newsweek. But it had one of the famous photos of him in a ship looking down, taking pictures on two other beam ships above the ground. So he's flying way above the ground, and below you can see the, the ground, the countryside, and two ships below him. And that was on the cover of Der Spiegel. And, um, you know, they... they they let him yeah. take photos and movie films, um, and many other many other, gave many other types of evidence and information too. So you got to look at you yeah. really have to look at all the pieces to put it together. So the the photograph that you're talking about is it the one where he's like looking out the viewfinder of the ship and there's right. ships below him. Right. Something like, now, how would you fake something like that? You know, that's that's unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How could you fake something like that? Anyway, um, but it is weird the way people s- seek for truth. Because, see, my my impression or my idea is there are people that are really hungry and searching for the truth. And then there are people that really are protecting their current world view. So they come up to something like the Billy Meyer case. And it threatens their worldview. So instead of them being objective about the data, they kind of screen it or reinterpret it so their worldview remains intact. All right. What are your thoughts? At least that's well, I think people are going to get angry when they read certain things. Whether it's um, um, the plane that... Well, I'm going back to my, my site here because it's such a good resource. The... Um, the there was a plane that was you're going to read about uh you know how certain wars uh were started you're going to you're going to learn things about um america that you don't like you know the the history you're going to learn about you know you're going to learn about things that rub you the wrong way and it's better to to learn mm-hmm. learn reality than just to keep living in you know and living in the haze and and believing the story that that we t- I mean I have I have on the beam of light site I have the 40 pictures that I that I own and no one's ever going to debunk those because it's none of the wedding cake it's it's they're all just it's just metal ships in the sky clear as day um you know I have the the history of Merlin and the ET and the sword Excalibur um stuff about um how the 
E.T.'s um, The Truth was covered up by the military industrial complex about War of the Worlds and things that where, are fake. Like, where where are your photographs? The photographs are on uh, the beam of light. It's it's if you go from the top, it's one, two, three. Well, I I type in the search box. I type okay. in um. Let's see, four. I type in the number number four zero because the title is 40 out of over 1,400 pre-digital photos of benevolent ET craft. Now, you can type in that whole phrase in a, in a search box, or you can go to my site, you know, billymeyer.wordpress.com, and type in 40, and it, mm-hmm. it, it's a little slideshow of 40-plus uh, pictures. I've, I've since gotten a few more pictures. They're from Wendell Stevens' estate, um, and other people have picked them up some too. But this guy from Colorado got his hands on Wendell Stevens' collection. So he has all kinds of non-Billy Meyer stuff, but he has had Billy Meyer stuff too, and he sold like film negatives and VHS tapes and um, photographs and all kinds of things from Wendell Stevens' um, collection. So I have pictures of um, four UFOs in one picture, two, three UFOs in one picture. Um I mean, they're just. I have one with uh, the sun shining behind it. I have one with a tree in front of it. Um, you know, just really clear photos, photographs. And I look at it all. I like to look at them all the time. Oh, and yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at them now. They're really great. And these were mostly taken in the '70s, right? Yep. Uh, one of them has writing on the back. It says June 12, 1975. Mm-hmm. Um, so he went public. So he started taking photos in India in the 60s. And um, he went public with his mission in 75. And that's when, you know, the photos started started picking up. Wouldn't it be so amazing to have been there and, See the ship come in and uh, land, and Semyasa get out and sit down and speak with her. That, that would be the most. What an experience! Yeah. I I still think. Do you think? Do you think we will be visited, you know, openly in the next fifty years by any any race from from o- beyond openly, Earth? openly. Yeah, publicly. You mean like publicly? Uh, I think if we make just tremendous progress spiritually, perhaps. Hmm. But I think because it they, might take a little they, longer than 50 years. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. But but they mentioned, uh, they said, oh, well, some race may show themselves in like 97 or 95, but then like, oh, it's not going to happen. And it, But uh, yeah, I, I, I always wondered about that. So I I just learned again more information. So every time I go back, I, I keep learning new things. Um, so they said, well, maybe maybe you'll be visited by this one race that's not related to us in like this year, that year. But then it didn't happen, and it, and and I didn't know why. And they said, we the Playaren, we we saw this coming, and we contacted this other race. And we showed him, we showed him some things, and then they were like, they decided not to visit Earth. They were like, oh boy, we're we're not going to do this anymore, which is really interesting. And that was just something recently I, I learned. Um, so. Um, do, you, do you remember what contact report that was, or? No. No. That would be something to to double check on. That's really interesting. Um, I could see, you know, I I, I go back to the whole cargo cult saying a lot because in many ways I think our religions are like the cargo cults that are on some of the Pacific Islands where the the poor primitive people are still waiting for the GIs to come back in their planes and their ships and um, I think these ETs know that they would probably do more damage to us than anything uh, if they came that's what I was meaning about disclosure before Oh, speaking of disclosure, I recently posted on my gregdougal.wordpress.com site 
the letter. So the letter from the Pliaran to the United States government. So a lot of disinformation people think that aliens have contacted the government and met with different presidents and formed agreements and treaties and all that. Well, you can believe that if you want to, but there's zero evidence for it. So the one thing that's, you know, the one thing that I can show you is the letter that the Playarans wrote to give to um, Lee Elders, I think it was, one of the investigators through Billy. Mm -hmm. And it's a four-page letter. And um, where is the title of the post is The One Time Aliens Offered to Help We Ignored Them. And it's a pretty recent um, post, and I, I, it's from Contact Report 117. And just so briefly, um, people know, Billy was been meeting, you know, was meeting for for a while, and one of the American investigators said, "Hey, you know, can the play and help the United States um, help us, you know, for peace or give us their wisdom or technology?" So they wrote a letter. And they delivered it to, I guess, Wendell Stevens or Lee Elders to give to the government, and it probably got pretty far. But there was a, basically a seven-month window where the United States government could reply and say yes or no. Well, long story short, they never heard a response. But the letter basically says, you can't, okay, we're willing to give you, we're willing to help you, but it's not going to be related to military or technology. We're just going to help you give you, you know, give you the information that you need to like survive and, you know, advance and, you know, progress. Mm -hmm. But here are here are the the restrictions. So, you can't mess with Billy Meyer. You can't mess with his family. You can't mess with his friends, his members. You can't you can't kidnap him. You can't drug him, blah blah blah, you know. You can't shoot at us, all these things. And oh, by the way, this thing that's going on with the Jim Jones thing, uh, you have to basically tell your your the country uh, that uh, all these religions are fake, phony, and false, and you know, tell them the truth about the origins of, you know, you know, basically that religions are just like control, you know, sure. you know, con- control, controlling, and wrong, and you know, you got when once you read the the history of what what really going on, you'd, you'd understand. But I'm surprised that they they said that, but that's that's really holding us back from progressing. Oh, I totally agree. You know, not knowing, not people not reading the Talmud of Emmanuel, the the one document that that was written during Jesus' lifetime. Um, his name was Emmanuel. The one, mm-hmm. the one document <laughs> written by the one disciple who can read and write, and that tells basically it, it reads like the Gospel of Matthew, except there's a lot more interesting details, and the, they use a lot different words. <laughs> Did you get the new version yet? I did. I got two. I got the small one and a big one. There's a, a big one, big version. Oh, like two? A, well, it's easier to it's easier to read. Uh, just the print's bigger. Oh, okay. Well, so it's to, like uh, if you ever got the, the the Goblet of the Truth in the in the printed book form, it's pretty big. You can get the Talmud of Emmanuel in the same size. That probably sounds like a good idea. It's probably a little more expensive though. It is. It is. Yeah but it's more than worth it. We have gone like 15 minutes over, and I really appreciate you coming on the show, Greg, and I, I hope you'll come back. There's a lot more to discuss. Um, tell people about your website again and anything else you'd like to close the show out with. Thanks. Um, it was great. It was great talking to you, Mark. Um, the uh, the Play R and Billy Meyer-related website is called Beam of Light, and it's Billy, B-I-L-L-Y, M E I E R dot WordPress dot com. My personal um, kind of site is Greg Dougal D O U G A L L dot WordPress dot com, and I post more like outer space and NASA and SpaceX stuff with you know my related information intermingled in there. But the Billy Meyer stuff has the contact um, report excerpts, and it also has um, we came from the stars and then from Mars, which is the truth. You know, it's the best consolidated history of of you know, humans, um, mm-hmm. and it, it has the outer space-related uh, excerpts. And also you can you can download the Goblet of the Truth for free and a couple other essays and, and documents on there. But I also recommend, you know, take it one step at a time, and, 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 and good luck. Good luck, everybody. 
Thanks for coming on. We'll chat with you later, Greg. Have a good evening. All right.